We wondered if in people living with HIV, whether this lack of impact of pain on daily activity was because they were resilient, which is the ability to cope with adversity. We also wondered if people relegated pain to a lower priority because they've got so many other stresses in their life. And the issue was in these other studies was that they'd only ever asked patients about their activity. Nobody's ever measured it objectively before. We recruited a cohort of people living with HIV from Johannesburg, half with chronic pain and half without. And chronic pain is where you have pain for most days of the week for at least three months. And we set out to do three things. Measure resilience, measure activity objectively, and find out how much patients worried about their health, money, having enough food, and their family. So this is an accelerometer and it measures movement. They're widely used, but nobody's ever used it in a study of HIV-related pain before. We put this accelerometer in a pouch and pot it, popped it on their belt and they wore it on their hip for two weeks uh, the whole time. It would have measured them doing all their usual stuff, so going to work, picking the kids up from school, partying at the weekends. There's a little reader and you pop this uh, accelerometer on the reader and it downloads the data. So that's counts of activity every minute for that uh, two weeks and then one can use that data for analysis. We hypothesised that people who were more resilient would be more active and feel less pain. What we found, patients in our study were really resilient. In fact, they were more resilient than other chronic pain cohorts. But our hypothesis was wrong. Greater resilience didn't associate with greater activity or feeling less pain. What was fascinating when we looked at the activity data was that it wasn't that the patients in pain were less affected by their pain, they weren't affected at all. We looked at activity in a number of ways and however we looked at it, there was no difference in activity between those in chronic pain and those without. Then we asked patients how much they worried about their health, having enough money, having enough food and their family. And what we found was that patients in pain worried about each of those things more than patients not in pain. And they worried about their health least of all. So it seems like they might be relegating pain to a lower priority. The other thing that came up was we asked patients who they would told about their pain. And it transpired that half of them hadn't told even their closest friends about their pain, and some not even their family, because they feared that revealing their pain would reveal their HIV status. And people were really fearful about HIV stigma, so they kept it their pain to themselves. Nobody's looked at the relationship between HIV stigma and pain before. And also, social support is really important for coping with chronic pain. So we need to now look at how concealing your pain affects people and how they manage their pain. And another thing we need to look at is whether maintaining such high activity levels in the face of pain is a good thing or not. In some situations with chronic pain, uh, keeping active is a good thing, and in other situations it can actually increase pain and disability. So there's lots more to do.